It is six o'clock. I will call the September 26, 2023 meeting of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors to order. This evening, Pastor or Dr. Hausman couldn't make it to provide the invocation. So, Mr. Terry, if you'll provide the invocation, and I'll ask you to please stand and remain standing for the pledge. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this fellowship tonight. Lord God, we thank you for this beautiful day that we've had. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon this meeting. We ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your direction tonight, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you pour out your blessings on our great country, our great commonwealth, and our county here in Wythe County. Lord, we thank you for these men and women up here tonight that's willing to serve, along with fellow leadership that's here present tonight. Lord, we ask for travel mercies. We thank you for your son so we can have eternal life with you, Jesus. We lift up, we thank, and we pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we get started, I'd like to welcome school board chair, Ms. Waggy, and vice chair, Ms. Manley, to the meeting, along with Dr. Poole, who will be presenting um, some information later on in the agenda. The first item we have is citizens' time. As always, I'll call you up. You have three minutes. And the first person we have signed up is Miss Linda Myers. Miss Meyer. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I checked on the Gleaves Bridge, and there's not a footprint over there again from VDOT. So now we are seven months into, they're saying, a 16-month fix. So I'd really like you to get on their case because we'd like to see something happening there, at least to bring supplies, people, anything going on. Nothing is going on, and the residents are really, really disgusted. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. That's all we have signed up for citizens' time, so I'll close citizens' time. And just before we move on, Mr. Barry, I know you reached out to VDOT about that project. Did you ever get a response back? I have not gotten a response back from them. There was the, uh, the information they'd sent, and you're right on the time frame of the project. There was um, like eight months or so worth of engineering and then the rest of it construction. I don't remember those time frames, but I've asked them just to make certain nothing has slipped on it, and I'll do another follow-up with them to see. Okay, thank you. If I, were, if I remember correctly, in that email that you said, the construction is not supposed to start until November. That's what I think of it. I that think sounds correct. That's what yeah. I was thinking it said. I just, like Mr. Bear said, make sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, I timeline think it, hasn't changed. I think it makes sense to keep on. All right, we'll move on to the agenda. We have a public hearing tonight about our comprehensive plan. Mr. Bear, I'll ask you to read the public hearing notice and apparently you're having the same problem we are getting I've stuff loaded. It. I've got it. Here we go. Uh, the Wythe County Board of Supervisors is currently in the process of reviewing the proposed comprehensive plan as recommended by the Wythe County, Wythe County Planning Commission. The plan is designed to be a decision-making tool to help guide the growth and development of the county. The plan is general, long-range, and comprehensive. The plan is based upon the data gathered about the land use, population, housing, community services, transportation, and the economy. The plan takes into consideration present and probable future needs and seeks to promote the health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, and general welfare of the people in Wythe County. In, or, in an effort to determine the views of local citizens and gain valuable information prior to adopting the Wythe County Planning Commission's recommended plan, the Board of Supervisors will be conducting a public hearing in compliance with 15.2-2204 of the Code of Virginia on Tuesday, September 26, 2023 at 6 p.m. in the boardroom of the Wythe County Administration Building, 340 South 6th Street, Wytheville, Virginia. A, proposed, a copy of the proposed conference plan is on file in the county administrator's office for review or can be viewed online at <coughs> www.withco.org. Citizens with questions or concerns can contact any member of the Board of Supervisors at 276-223-4500 by order of the Board of, with County Board of Supervisors, Stephen D. Bayer, County Administrator. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Bayer. 
Um, with that being said, I'll open the public hearing. Since it is a public hearing, I'll call you up and you have five minutes speaking as an individual. And the first person we have signed up is, again, Ms. Meyer. Yes. I went through the comprehensive plan and I was very surprised to see a lot of data from 2019. Also, the agricultural data is all ag census material from 2017. And is that quite relevant, uh, relevant now? I was quite surprised to see the dates in there uh, regarding 2017 information. Uh, the only thing that stood out was the uh, guidelines to consider for siting solar facilities. That was an outstanding piece of the information. I hope you've all checked it out because it was really good. Um, this would be, I think, the fifth edition of our comprehensive plan. The, the fourth edition cost us 16 grand. Uh, I was curious as to what this was costing us. That's it, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. That's all we have signed up to speak at the public hearing, so I'll close the public comment portion of the hearing. Um, Mr. Barrett, on the, as far as the cost, is that all? There were some grant funds. Mr. Hankins could probably give us a better breakdown on that. We received a, a, a grant from uh, VDEM. Uh, it was part of CARES Act uh, funding. Uh, so the county is, is not out any money uh, for having this uh, plan done by an outside contractor. Uh, the grant funds used to pay that contractor were $65,000. Um, that's in line with what other contractors are making uh, for doing similar work. Uh, this was a complete uh, rewrite of the plan, so it was a pretty substantial amount of work. Um, and if, if you'll indulge me, in, in terms of the age of the data, uh, that was a concern of the Planning Commission as well. However, uh, some of those surveys are only undertaken every five years. Um, so the 2017 data that was released uh, wasn't supposed to be up updated until this year, and uh, we haven't actually seen that be released yet. Uh, but this is a fluid document, so we can revise uh, as that, that data becomes available. Um, uh, we, we can add it back into the plan and uh, every time you revise the plan we reset the, the five-year clock so uh, I would advise doing that all right thank you um, I did share um, <coughs> I did share a couple of corrections with mr. bear earlier um, more of just grammatical editorial yeah, yeah. it was more grammatical errors um, does anybody else have anything to add on the comp plan? I do not. <clears throat> so right. I had a, I had someone contact me about the fire trucks replacements. Uh, or, I mean, I was looking for it in my plan now, and I couldn't. I mean, it's a big document. So. <laughs> uh, what they were concerned about was that they're, are they on a rotational basis? Or are they, how? How is that going to be, or is that anything that's really set in stone in this? Or uh, nothing I mean, is set. I know in, it's a fluid. Yeah, no, nothing is set in stone. Uh, I think what we would recommend is that staff be able to evaluate where we are with trucks. And, you know, we, we try to keep track of where we are, uh, and, and sometimes trucks wear out faster depending on where they are and, and what they're used for. So, uh, you know, having a set, you know, five or ten year rotation may not make the most sense particularly if we can move a truck from one department to another. And, and you know, I think we would certainly want to look at that as part of the new uh, emergency services operations that, uh, that we're getting ready to put in place. Well, I mean, this, the concern that was brought to me was that Spiegel's got a fire truck that's a 90, I want to say it was a 96. And that one's on our radar. Uh, okay. you know, we'd like to get that one updated as well. Uh, but we also realize that Speedle has one of the newer trucks in the fleet right. as well. So, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure that we, we keep some balance, um, you know, looking where, where the needs are. It was just brought to my attention, so I wanted to make sure it was brought to the board. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Does anybody else have anything on the comp plan? I guess staff's recommendation would be, um, obviously, we've got a couple minor, and I think grammatical is not the right word, and I said that, Mr. Chairman. It's more like it says the date of, uh, Rural Tree Middle School was 2002. Actually, it wasn't a new middle school in 2002, but the middle school concept in 2002 renovated an old school and things like that. So we've got a minor just corrections to make certain they don't show with new schools. But um, 
is the board ready to adopt this? One of our things would be, and, and along the lines of what Ms. Meyer said, is obviously the sooner we adopt this, the sooner you have a comprehensive plan that is starting to discuss solar, where our old comprehensive plan does not have anything in it at all. And um, if, if the document is acceptable with, with correcting those minor things, we would recommend that the board consider going ahead and adopting the comprehensive plan. Yeah, and you know the, the the solar piece as well as the long range or not so long range discussion about you know the the land use and 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 you know what we look at. I, I think the the final product, even though it's it's a fluid document, I mean I think it it well represents. Um, you know they've taken in a lot of input from the citizens but I think it really represents a direction that I think the county needs to go in but that's my opinion so. I agree with you and, and like we said it, it's you know it's it's comprehensive and it's, it's not any action in here it just gives you the base for what Thank to build on so. Mr. Chairman if I might um, I, I will point out we, we had survey responses from nearly 2,000 residents of the community, which is, again, outstanding. If you'll recall the uh, broadband study that we did, we had uh, about 1,800 respondents to that. So we, we've had a lot more citizen engagement, even though we don't have a lot of people here to speak to the comprehensive plan tonight. A lot of folks have, have had the opportunity to speak to it, and uh, that, that was helpful in shaping the, uh, the, the data and the outcomes. <laughs> um. Do I need to close the public hearing before I open? All right. Does anybody else have anything to add? So. All right. Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing, and I'll <coughs> open up the floor if anybody wants to make a motion to approve the comprehensive plan as presented. I'll make the motion to approve the comprehensive plan as presented. All right. I have a motion by Ms. Lawson. Do I have a second? Second have a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any more questions or discussion about the comprehensive plan? Just a clarification on the motion. It, it includes the changes that Mr. Byron recommended? Yes, sir. It does. Yes. All right. Does anybody else have anything? All right. Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 All right. So approved. Next item on our agenda is our payment of invoices. Each board member has received in their board package a copy of the invoices that need to be paid. I'll entertain a motion to pay the invoices. Right. Have a motion by <clears throat> Mr. Smith. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions, discussion, or any invoice any board member wants to pull out? All right. Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Terry. Aye. Uh, 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 uh. So approved. Our next item is the minutes of our previous meeting from September the 12th, 2023. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Horney. Is there any questions or additions to the minutes as presented? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. Next item is old business. Mr. Barry, do we have anything under old business? I do not have anything to present, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hankins, do you have anything? Yes, sir. Right. We'll move on to reports. Tonight we have Dr. Poole, the superintendent of the Wythe County Schools, to present some updated information. Dr. Poole. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Mr. Barry. Uh, always a pleasure to come before this board and present what's going on or what's going on with the Wood County Public School System. I uh, have a lot to be proud of, and we uh, like to like to shout that out every once in a while. The so one thing, and I know this has been a long time in coming, but we finally have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, unfortunately for us, uh, looks like we received a fair amount of new funding. Uh, there were three large categories uh, that we received funding. Uh, obviously, the 2% pay raise, 
the reduction in the support cap. And then finally, flexible per pupil funding. Now, the 2% raise, that is effective beginning January 1. And obviously, our folks, the way they're paid at the end of the month, they would see that at the end of their January paycheck. And that is prorated as such. So that's $201,000 for Wythe County. So that doesn't go back. That's not retroactive. That is to pay for the remainder of the fiscal year. Now, the support cap back in 08, 09, uh, during the recession, the General Assembly uh, cut support cap funding. And support cap, for example, paraprofessionals, uh, if, custodial, secretarial, any type of support position. The way that is funded through the General Assembly, that was funded at a rate much higher prior to 08, 09. They cut those numbers. So we have been funded 21 positions per 1,000 students for 15 years. That has been something that we have asked repeatedly to go back to the way it was. So finally this year, the General Assembly listened, and they cut a portion out. So now we are receiving funding for 24 positions per 1,000 students. Now they cut about half of that out, because prior to that, we were at about 27 positions per 1,000. So that equates to $539,000 for Wynn County. Now those two pots of money are for this year and this year only for this fiscal year. Now hopefully, obviously, it will carry on in the future, but those are specific for this year. The flexible funding per pupil with county is going to get about $1.7 million. Now, the flexible funding, we're still working through that as far as what we can and cannot use it for, and it's also over a three-year period through FY26. That is for, I don't know if you saw, all-in, tutoring, chronic absenteeism, and relating to the Virginia Literacy Act. For uh, That was a big piece of legislation that went through. Now, we started on that last year and have really been ramping that up. And <coughs> recently, we attended a regional conference, and our folks felt like they were well ahead of the curve on that. Came back, and they were exceedingly happy about where we were as a county and what we've been preparing for. Uh, now with that being said, the 1.7 can be spent toward reading specialists, can be spent toward the Virginia Literacy Act, spent toward tutoring, which can be during school, after school, before school, Saturday, take your pick. And then a, another portion is for chronic absenteeism. I'm sure you've heard on the news from the governor, from the General Assembly, chronic absenteeism is an issue, not just with Wythe County, not just Southwest Virginia, across the state and across the nation. So this past year, we enacted a new policy to address that in Wythe County. Uh, that has been a push, not just here, but everywhere. So we're looking to receive additional funding for that in this pot of money over the next three year period. Now that can be used for programs to incentivize attendance, for truancy officers. There are all kinds of things this money, by just the term flexible funding, can be used for. Now the tutoring portion of it and our spending plan, we're looking at about a one month turnaround time to try to uh, figure out how we're going to implement a three year spending plan. So that's a very quick turnaround when you're talking about a systemic new initiative. So we're working on that now, and I don't have a lot of information to provide you in details. That will be provided later, and we will hopefully at the October board meeting be able to present our plan. Uh, and then in the future, I'll be able to share that with, with you guys. But what we're really hoping to do is move forward more rapidly with the Literacy Act with our reading specialist, where we can not only target just the elementary, but also middle level uh, with learning loss 
especially in language arts. So that's what we're really moving toward at this point. We have three positions. What we're looking to add is at least another two and potentially three more. So we could cover one, basically one specialist per two elementary schools and then one specialist uh, or two specialists at the middle school and then an additional floating that can go around and help uh, with language arts and reading, just any type of reading initiative. So those, anytime you know that you're, when you're talking about people, that's an expensive proposition. Now textbook adoption is another that we're looking to potentially use because of the change in the legislature or in the change in the legislation for the Virginia Literacy Act. So we're also looking to use some of this money toward textbook adoption as well. Uh, that's a lot of information and not a lot of hard answers, but the final for Wythe County is a little over is $2.45 million total for this year, not including what can be carried over into <laughs> FY25 and then FY26 with the flexible funding. Now, with all that being said, I can answer questions on that now before I move on, if you, if you would like. The 2% uh, pay raise. Am I going to get phone calls again from teachers that say that they're at the top of the scale and aren't going to get any raise? It's, they're, they're, they got a raise this year. It's an average of 2%. Just like everything else that comes out of the General Assembly. It's not, this is what it is. It is an average of 5%. 2%. People get caught up in what comes out of Richmond and what the folks in Richmond tell the papers, tell the television, tell the radio stations. All right. They don't always tell you that this starts in December. They don't always tell you that this is <coughs> SOQ funded only money. They don't always tell you that this is, uh, this, this will start in September of next year. They say, we're giving you a 5% raise, which is not necessarily accurate. It is not that. And it, sometimes it is over a period of time. So what I'm telling you is 2% average that is prorated beginning January 1, and they will receive what would have been their 2% average, and we started at the beginning of the school year, that will be added to their January check that they will receive at the end of the month. Just like a pay scale is good for one year. Most people wouldn't want to still be on the same pay scale that they started on if they came to workforce in 1983. <laughs> Those things change, typically for the better. So there's a lot of information that's not necessarily straightforward. So if I'm hearing you, correct, hearing you correctly, there. <clears throat> They're taking that two percent back to August. No, or is it just no, 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 starting? No. It is okay. January yeah, on. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, was, it, it that's why we're receiving two hundred one thousand because that will that will cover that from January through the end of fiscal year June thirty. And that's just for SOQ. And that's just SOQ. And we will match out of some of these other pots of money, which. As we've discussed before, would mean the county is contributing more toward the two percent than what the state is. Yes, sir. <laughs> they don't. They don't brag about they that. Don't say that. They don't brag about that in Richmond either. No, they don't. <laughs> They're going to tell you what's good for Richmond, not what's good for and what Wythe County does for Wythe County's effort. Yeah. Other questions about budgetary numbers before I move on. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, the next handout that you have is based upon SOL test results. And Wood County is 15, which is not too bad for a rural school division in Southwest Virginia. As a matter of fact, Southwest Virginia as a whole typically punches well above their weight. Southwest Virginia across each category whether it's reading, science, math, social sciences, Southwest Virginia is the highest ranking region in the state. The only subject area that Southwest Virginia is not the highest is writing, and, and we're second. 
So our competition is not necessarily the Arlington's or the Falls Church or Fairfax. Our competition is Tazewell in Washington County. So Wise County, those school divisions achieve at a much higher rate than some of the wealthiest school divisions in the Commonwealth. If you look at uh, the list, you have Wise, Washington, Patrick, Norton, Tazewell, and Whip in the top 15. So our competition is as much local as it is across the state. And I think that speaks well of our region. Uh, when you look at the, the, the highest achieving division, Falls Church City, I looked up this number because our poverty rate and our economically disadvantaged students much higher. You know, out of the 4,000 typically school-aged children, you're looking at about a quarter that are economically disadvantaged. So about a thousand. Falls Church City has approximately 2,800 students in that area. How many kids do you think fall into the economically disadvantaged category? Zero. 79. <laughs> 79 out of 2,800. So for us to be competing against that, and I think that speaks well of what we're able to accomplish with what we have here in Southwest Virginia. Now, we had a number of schools uh, finish in the top 10 within their school and testing subject area. For example, Fort Chisel High School was a top 10 school out of, or in math. So out of, I think there were 1,822 schools. I think Fort Chisel was 130th maybe out of 1,800 schools in math. Uh, Max Meadows was, I think, 121 in science. Uh, Rural Retreat High School, actually in math, they finished second out of 1,822 schools in math. The school that finished ahead of them is a gifted school in Virginia Beach. Wow. That's awesome. So out of 1,822 schools. And in science, they finished in the top 10 percent as well. So we have schools that are exceedingly high achieving across the board. Now, what we are looking to address, uh, and I alluded to it earlier, is the gap groups with language arts. That's one area that we're targeting this year, as well as chronic absenteeism, as is everyone in Virginia. So those two areas are our areas of focus this year and moving forward. Math uh, did very well, science very well. And language arts overall we did, but there are some of our gap groups. We have some issues at elementary schools in certain categories. And gap groups may be economically disadvantaged, maybe minority, maybe sped, maybe any number of work. If there is a, a larger gap from overall to where they're achieving. So, those are the areas that we are addressing. Now, any questions about SOS? Nope. Usually, this paper here, would it be fair to say that throwing money at a problem doesn't always fix it? Doesn't always fix it. It's how you use that money and the quality of individuals that you have. That is the key. Well, and you know, Dr. Poole, you talked about. Southwest Virginia and you know we looked at this three page list before the meeting and since you got me started on Richmond um, I'll just go ahead and finish uh, you know <laughs> with counties rank number 15 and if you flip through a couple pages um, to the last page um, Richmond City, where our capital is located, is number 127 out of 131. And I'm not saying they need to move the capital, but if they do, it looks like they really ought to consider Southwest Virginia based on the first page. 
And I know Governor Youngkin caught a lot of heat because he didn't send his kids to Richmond City Schools, and I can't say that I blame them after looking at that. So he'd be better served sending the Southwest Virginia. I just, yeah, absolutely. Of course, Rumble ain't much better. Well, yeah, it's 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 to to Mr. Cook's point, it's it's uh, interesting to see some of the large systems, which you know have much larger budgets. Um, located um, halfway down of the second page and, and on to the last page. Um, and congratulations to Rory Treat for being number two in the state math. And I'm glad I'm not still in school because I'd have knocked them down at least two spots. Um, but I mean, that, that really is impressive um, for a small school. What our schools are able to accomplish, and that's that's a testament to the teachers, principals, cafeteria, bus drivers, everyone in those schools that make it a true community and make it somewhere where those kids can learn. And they put a lot of heart and a lot of effort into making that happen. All right, finally, uh, Scott Memorial Construction Project. If you haven't been. I uh, urge you to get in touch with either uh, me or Dr. Haga, and we'll be happy to take you on a tour. Uh, the Masons, day-to-day, uh, -day, depending on where, where you are, which day you're there, there's a lot of progress from one day to the next. Uh, right now, they are laying block on the second floor on the instructional wing where the classrooms are all located in the main portion of the building as well as in the admin section. They're laying the first floor on the admin. The gym is completely uh, blocked in. Uh, they have set the steel for the roof. Uh, the instructional wing, the first floor is complete. They set the steel and they have uh, put the decking on and poured uh, concrete. They're going up the second floor. Three of the exterior walls are getting close to finished height. So interior walls and the fourth wall, hopefully by the end, middle of next week. I hate to, because if, as soon as I say something, they finish about three days earlier. So I'll say, I'll give them plenty of time. By the end of next week, that should be complete, and they should be ready to set steel in that section. Uh, they're currently cutting through uh, probably about 14-inch wall down in the basement in Bullroom, what used to be the old bomb shelters and the buildings that were built in the 50s. If you've never tried to cut through 14 inches of solid concrete, it takes a while. Uh, and they've had to do that twice to connect what will be uh, the new Scott into the dining area at George Wythe. Uh, the entire lower floor at George Wythe will become two dining rooms and one kitchen. The pad is has basically been built up almost a grade in the back where the new kitchen and new locker rooms will be located. Uh, and the locker rooms were taken out during a demo because that will be the location of the new George Wythe dining room. And the old dining room will basically be the Scott dining room. And then they will share a kitchen, much like Fort Chisholm, where you have one kitchen and two separate dining rooms. Uh, the grade is just about there on the New Road, well, our road, which was the parking lot, where we will come out to a T intersection rather than the Y intersection that we had before. Uh, that's there, There's going to be a parking lot down there, but that's one of the few places we have as a lay down area right now. And since we don't absolutely have to have that, it's much more valuable as a lay down area as it is, than it is a parking lot at this time. Uh, so anytime that you're ready to come up, let me know. I'll be happy to take you on a tour. It is quite substantial and will be a very nice building when all is said and done. Questions? <coughs> Anybody have any questions for Dr. Poole? <laughs> I'll ask the one question he knows I want to ask. Initial numbers are looking good for budgeted numbers? Yes. Well, I mean, with, with the influx here, I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of additional funding. Now, some of it, obviously, is earmarked 
uh, and how if this 1.7 doesn't carry into additional fiscal years or future fiscal years, that's going to be hard to spend. And your, your ADM is good on, on ADM budget. ADM is 3696, I think was the one. I think that's the number I had at the last board meeting, 3696, which is about 21 over, uh, where were we at? 3696, But it's over what you projected. It's over what we projected. Now, not, not as much as last year. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, it is at least eleven. Uh, it may be thirty-six, eighty-six, but that is it's at least eleven over what we projected with the budget with thirty-six seventy-five. So now it's not a, not a hundred like we were last year when we picked up yeah. all these kids. But uh, able to maintain that number is good, especially when you look at other divisions in Southwest that are hemorrhaging uh, ADM yearly, if not monthly. Um, and we have some other smaller projects that will uh, be ramping up. One is lighting at Georgia with on the football field. You know, I've presented that back during the budget. Uh, we have patched and band-aided that with there. We have a couple more games to get through and then hopefully that will be uh, that will be new. Uh, the roof at Fort Chiswell Middle that will go out in the late winter, early spring. Uh, hopefully river roofing is down from where it was when we did Jackson because it was exceedingly high at that point. Uh, have a bus uh, hopefully on the lot, not with us yet, but that's about $150,000 for a new bus. That's a gas bus. That's, and that's one. Wow. A couple years ago we were buying two for mm -hmm. that. Well, thank you, Dr. Poole, and, and, and for the information, and, and also, as we've discussed in the past, this past budget year dealing with the state has been extremely frustrating, and Dr. Poole has been really good um, to share the information he got from his sources, and the information we got from VACO, and the information that Mr. Barrett got from his sources, and Sheriff Foster, and the people the sheriff association everybody's been communicating trying to you know figure what well, number one when they were going to pass the budget and number two what it was going to look like but um, we certainly appreciate um, the the effort um, on your part and, and miss um, waggy and miss manley that's i'm sure y'all been just as frustrated as we've been but <laughs> Now we at least have a document to look at, whether we like it or not. So. <laughs> so. And, and as soon as we have our capital numbers, we'll finalize everything. We'll get that all to y'all. So vote on and pass that on. And, uh, I appreciate everything y'all do for us. And if you have any questions, I'll have the budget book. Again, after we get that cap tool where we can finalize, we'll have that budget book for y'all, hopefully well before budget season. So. But if you have any questions or need anything, certainly let me know. All right. Thank you, Dr. Poole. Thanks, Thanks for that. Sorry. Thanks. All right. Moving on to reports, we have a treasure report. Ms. Gwynn. Good evening. Good evening. Before Mr. Poole and Ms. Wagon Ms. Manley decide they don't want to stay for all the excitement tonight, I want to say I'm so proud to be an Indian and a cabbage head tonight. As I see a few others here in front of me, and there's a couple back behind mm -hmm. me, but... That's not taking anything away from George Wythe and Fort Chiswell High Schools, but it's it's a good good feeling when your alma mater ranks high on certain certain criteria. So glad to be a cabbage head. My uncle's always called me a cabbage head, and we're living back up to that reputation <laughs> between um, the former Terry Farm and um, uh, crawfish. Crawfish. All I could think of was Harry Joe, but yep. they're crawfish. So we're, we're living back up to that expectation. Though you have to play a game of Mario Kart to get up and down the road right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to touch on several things for you tonight. Um, we kind of have a lot happening at the treasurer's office uh, right now. I'm going to start with the financial report that you have um, for month ending of August. In the um, Consolidated account, we have a cash balance of $76,258,430. And 
Included within that balance is the uh, general fund total, which is $41,285,448. Um, one thing I do want to note on your financial reports, um, if you look at, uh, if you're on the treasurer's report, it's page one. If you're in the finance director's report, it's going to be on, well, page the second page one of both reports, okay? Um, it's showing that we have collections in some of those current tax um, accounts. We don't. We haven't billed out 2023 yet, so um, that's just an error in how that um, has pulled in. So I'll, I'll have, talk with the finance director tomorrow um, on how that's um, uh, posting in and get those corrected. So with your next board packet, when you see the September financial statement, um, those numbers are going to disappear, but hopefully by that point we'll be within the 2023 current year taxes. You'll see some different numbers there, but I do want to point out that those uh, those balances that are within those accounts for uh, real estate, personal property, mobile home, machine and tool, and merchants capital, uh, current taxes for all of those categories, those numbers will need to, to be moved. Those are technically delinquent collections at this point because your, um, for example, 2022 taxes became, even though they were delinquent in December, on your GL they become delinquent as of July 1st. So all that will shift around. But any questions on anything within the uh, financial report? No. Okay. So uh, moving on, um, kind of another point of interest within the financial report. Um, on page, at the very end of the treasurer's report, um, there's a uh, treasurer's collection report that's there that outlines the, uh, the taxes for each year. If you notice on the very end, there's a line item that's called uh, land redemption. And there's a uh, balance in there of $30,045.30. That is money that was returned to with county coffers from the real estate tax sale that was held in June of 2021. These funds were returned due to excess proceeds. We had three parcels that the amount that the property brought at public auction exceeded the amount of taxes and fees that were owed. Those funds get transferred to circuit court and the circuit court clerk holds those fees for two years. If they are not claimed by any heirs of the property, they get returned to the locality. So off of three parcels, uh, we were able to um, take in that little over $30,000 that you see on there um, because those those folks did not claim those funds. So um, that's extra, a little bit of extra money in the scheme of things. It's not a lot, but $30,000 is a lot in the end. So staying um, on the tax sale, um, all of you may have already seen the information. We do have a tax sale scheduled on Wednesday, October the 18th. At 2 p.m., it will be held across the street from the Sheriff's Office at the former Town of Whitfield Recreation Center. It's now the 4th Street Civic Center is what it's called. Uh, we will be holding auction there. As of uh, this point in time, unless something drastically changes, we have a total of 26 parcels that will be sold. Um, 14 of those are considered a judicial sale parcel and 12 of those are considered non-judicial sale and the difference is for judicial that does require court approval. Non-judicial sale does not require the circuit court judge to approve the final sale of those parcels. So come October, um, upon successfully selling all of those properties, um, the amount of money that would be collected just on tax penalty and interest as of that point in time on the 26 parcels would equivalent out to um, $77,277. So that's the money that we have to collect off of those parcels, just tax penalty and interest. Um, the um, auctioneer and I went out today and uh, made every effort to locate all of these properties. We're required to put signage on uh, the parcels to uh, notify folks of, that this is the parcel being sold. We did have a few that we were unable to locate. Uh, some are landlocked, so you can't get to them. Some are on the other side of a locked gate that we couldn't get to. Some um, are not mapped into our system, so we really have no idea where they're located. Um, 
But for the most part, we got signs on all the parcels. We did put a sign on one of the parcels here in the town of Whitfield. We came back by about 10, 15 minutes later because we had to locate another parcel nearby and there was already somebody in front of the house taking pictures and looking at that, that parcel. So um, folks are already checking those out. Most of the parcels are located, um, everything is within the Lead Mine, Speedwell, Fort Chiswell, and Town of Withville uh, districts is where all of these parcels are located. We did have one that was in the Black Lake district, however, um, that payment uh, payoff was went through final approval last week before all of this was released, so it did come off of the sale list. So we do have that excitement coming up. Um, so if you have any questions on those parcels, um, let me know. I'll be glad to answer anything I can. I try to make myself familiar with them uh, simply because um, folks call our office to ask questions. Um, I think my staff was able to track where all I had been today because of the phone calls that they were getting. They knew exactly where I had been because people were seeing the signs and calling. So, um, But let me know if you have any questions on anything. Um, so continuing on, um, the state budget was mentioned earlier by uh, Mr. Poole and, and, uh, and Mr. Vault as well. I will add, um, sometimes if we pick and choose who we send to the city of Richmond, Mr. Vault, that helps. That might help with this public schools and their, their SOL scoring potentially because we're all sending people there. So maybe we need to, to rework that a little bit. But I will add, within the state budget, the treasurer's offices are supposed to receive um, funding to restore the uh, last unfunded positions that we have. I do have one position that the county fully funds um, salary-wise, so we shouldn't have those numbers. Uh, they're to meet this week and to send out final numbers next week, so I can let you know what that final number is on us of what we should be receiving toward that last county funded position. So that'll put all of my positions back. Um, not fully funded by comp board because my four deputies are um, only, um, we receive half of that money back, so I'm gonna call it partially funded. They're not fully funded, but uh, they will be comp board funded positions, so we will receive that back. Um, auditor public accounts for our state audit, uh, they were in the office um, back in, remember if it was the end of August or early September because the time's running together, but I'm, I'm proud to report we did get a clean audit. They audit us, the commissioner's office and the sheriff's office, but we all did receive a clean audit and I think there's a letter in your board packet uh, from the state auditor as well. So last but not least, um, the question that everybody has, 2023 taxes. They're in the process. We've run into a lot of problems. Um, Commissioner and I are working um, to try to get those figured out. There's a lot of uh, things still system-wise um, coming from the commissioner side that, that, that we're trying to work through, um, trying to get some numbers to match up, some numbers coming um, off of their data. When I run my reports, they're not matching up. We're waiting on Munis to figure out some issues to tell us why these reports are not matching up because they should be. Um, there's significant variances. Um, it may come down to if we can get it within a reasonable amount, we may just have to, to pull the plug and say we're moving on. So um, all that is still in the process. So once we can get that done, um, personal property we'd hoped would already be a little bit more advanced than what it is. Real estate um, commissioner just received the file last week from Munis to fix the problems that had not been fixed from the 2022 data. And... Um, the new data supposedly was not going to wipe out our escrow codes on the accounts. It wiped every one of them out. I'm now waiting for them to restore about five, 6,000 escrow codes on bills so that we can um, potentially move forward depending upon preliminary numbers, which um, the commissioner and I are, are still working on all of that to try to get that lined up. So um, it's a hurry up and wait. Um, I'm not going to deny that I'm not a fan of the support we receive from the software folks. I try to be very understanding, but after weeks, and that's an S on the end of that, it gets very frustrating. So, um, but that's all that I have. Um, does anyone have any questions on anything that I've touched on or something that I have not mentioned that um, you have inquiries about? So, Ms. Gwen, on the, yes. the taxes, um, do you have a, a date or a time frame or is it still up in the air right now? 
have no idea. Um, I can't. I can't send data until I have a tax file. Um, Ms. Baltz still working on that. We're working with Munis to try to figure out what the variances are, especially on personal property, because that's the one we're more progressed on. Um, we sent another round of data back out to them on Friday. Um, this is about the sixth or seventh <coughs> round of trying to get this process through to get this variance revised. Um, I got an email today that they were going to look at it and try to see what the difference is. It went out Friday, today's Tuesday. Again, my frustration. Um, so I, I really don't know, Mr. Smith. Um, we're just, um, I feel like we're always in a hurry up and wait mode. Um, because we end up at their mercy and we, we've really been working on this now for over a month um, we, we you know found some things that we we decided to run differently to see if that would help but at the same time we're not um, not getting answers from support either because they're saying oh we're seeing it and all this works out but when we look at it on paper it's not working out tell me what you're seeing please but then that's where it comes back to everything is through a support ticket online. You can't actually talk to someone. So I'm constantly posting comments of, is there going to be an update today? Can you tell me what the status of this is? Can you please call me so we can talk about it? Um, sometimes I can get calls and I can verbally go through things. Um, sometimes I can't. They can't hear me or see my hands moving when I'm having to do it online through a support tickets so we're, we're trying to work through all of that um, so hopefully we can get get that moving real estate is usually fairly simple if they can get my, my escrow codes back so we can make those updates I think we can move on pretty well with that um, but the, the camera bridge when Mrs. Vault loads in her camera bridge something though Munis has said they fixed the problem and it was not to wipe out those escrow codes it has wiped out those escrow codes and we need that data because we're pulling those databases to send out to those escrow companies so they know who to pay. But it's. Um, okay. Yeah, if, if you and Ms. Ball could keep us posted on that or at least keep Mr. Byer posted. Mr. Byer, is there anything that we can reach out to Munis? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming we've paid for that. Yeah, I, 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 I've been support. meeting with Mr. Katrin and, and talking about it. I, I went down today to, to talk to them. Yeah, Ms. Quinn was out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was out, but uh, I did talk to Ms. Vault about the, the status and the updates. But yes, we are we are trying to make certain we're, we're pushing through as quickly as possible to, to do this. Yeah, because we, we don't want a, a repeat of what happened. No, uh, so if we can get that escalated up. I mean, it, it should be outside of a ticket now. We should be able to talk to somebody with the information I, we just got. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. And I really want to avoid tax date extensions, due date extensions, just because um, it, it makes things chaotic for people because one year it's December 5th, next year it's the 30th, and then, you know, we may go back to the 5th. And it, we just need to have the consistency back and, and get it back to the 5th. But... Um, uh, there's days I come in and I'm like, okay, it's all going to work out. And Ms. Vault and I'll talk a hundred times. And we're like, it's going to work out today. And then it goes down the <laughs> It's getting so close. That's, that's the <laughs> Yeah, but that's so close. I mean, you can see that very dim light at the end of the tunnel. But that dim light is just, it keeps moving further away. So um, it, it, She's right. Some of it doesn't make sense. It's, it's the same system. And if the number's here, when it comes over, it should be the same number there. And... I think you're getting personal property down to about $2,700 difference, and that's getting yeah. real close, you know. I mean, it's, it's better than what it was and before. And in the so. scheme of $12 million, $2,700, $3,000 is not that big of a deal. You know, those are things we can look forward to see, uh, you know, after the fact what what is causing that. But um, I don't know if it's a difference. I don't want to blame it on the upgrade. I don't, I don't know if it's a difference in the upgrade. Um, our processes are pretty much the same. We don't. We haven't really changed anything through our process. Um, you know, getting to this point, which you know, I don't entirely know how my side of it's changed until I can, you know, take possession of the file. Because generally, um, we get to a certain point, and then um, Ms. Vault and I have to work back and forth for a few days on things before our office fully takes the file. So I don't know if it's just some difference in processes there. Um, uh, I just feel like they're always writing scripts for things. It's constantly a script to fix this, a script to fix that. 
write me a script to fix this entirely because you shouldn't have to be writing scripts. We should be able to go through our steps and this move through that we're not having to rely on IT. I told David Southers when we went to the system, there's no reason our offices can't be at least 90% sufficient on this system. And I feel like we're 9% sufficient on this system without IT at times. Yeah, so, I mean, from my standpoint, and I can't speak for none of the rest of the board members, but if we've paid for an upgrade and it sounds like if they're writing scripts to fix problems, we didn't get an upgrade. Uh, so we need to hold them accountable. I mean, it's, it's unacceptable to be in the situation we are right now, I mean, we we kept moving dates out last year. We we don't want to do that. We're not going to do that this year. Uh, so we need to get everything taken care of. And, and and it's and we're not the only county that uses the system. That that's the part that right. I mean, so I mean, so we need to get somebody on the phone to be talking with Miss Gwynn or Miss Walton or both. Uh, so I mean. I, I get frustrated because I feel like it makes us look like we're incompetent of doing our jobs when it's not us and our job it's beyond that of being able to do it our, we don't have the system that will allow us to do our job so we need and, to and personal property i mean I, uh, personal property should not be any issue because it's it's nothing's new on it now real estate was still division system last year and we're only on the second year of that camera bridge and all the the scripts they wrote i think a lot of those have been into the new program, but there's obviously the, the, the escrow code was what I was coming to check on with you today to see how that had come through and, and what they correct on it. Um, but yeah, real personal property, you know, we've been on the system several years and, and there shouldn't be a problem on a personal property at all. So, you know, yeah. we, we are pushing on that as hard. But if we don't lean on them hard. Oh, absolutely. Gonna, you have to. They're going to say, well, they're accepted. It. Really it's it's becoming that. acceptable yeah. and, and it's not, that's not the case. I really wanted to take a road trip to Maine. I can't tell you how much I really wanted to take a road trip to Maine. That may be part of the problem. <laughs> it just frustrates me. I'll, I'll plead the fifth on the rest of it. But, um, <laughs> but that, that's all I have and my frustrations on top of it. But um, anything else outside of Mr. Smith's inquiry? Does no, anybody ma else have anything for Ms. Gwynn? No. All right. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next we have Commissioner Vault. Ms. Falk, do you have anything? I know you, we had a resolution, but I think we're going to... No, we need to hold off on that until we get the personal property. And, and we're not going to get that we're going to get it. We are. Yeah. Sorry, it's we're not going to let you give up. No, um, we're not. It's like a challenge, man. Mr. Chairman, I, I would... It, as long as, in theory, you all agree with the numbers. I've sent you all the numbers, and, and obviously we are anticipating, based on the new personal property numbers, it's about $900,000 less in revenue than what was anticipated last year, which comes in pretty close to the amount we rebated. So um, this, this rebate calculation comes off of these final values that, that they've been working on, and as I said, it looks like it's going to increase from 27% up to 30%, which would be a first time it's ever increased, but that would make sense because that would be the first time our values have ever decreased from, from what we've had in the past. So um, as they get those numbers together, as long as you are fine with it, I'd like for them to feel comfortable to go ahead and start running everything. And, and you'll still come back at your next meeting and approve this resolution, but that not hold up anything on their side waiting for you all to approve that amount. And what I mean by that is, you know, we'll come back and say, let's change it from 30% to 40% or things like that in the process. We'll run it off those calculated numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's yes. fine with me. Yeah, I mean, I th I'm good with the 30%. Because I, mean. I, I hate to hold them up yeah. two additional weeks just to come to you all to get that as long as you mm -hmm. all are, are good with that number. And I'll, we'll send you the calculations and show what they are. But we still need to take or need to wait to take action or do you want us to I think technically it'd be better to wait to wait. take action as long but as long as we have a consensus we have a consensus that, that we're okay to go with that I just don't want them to have to not feel like they can move forward with those numbers right I mean um, yeah 30 percent yeah. and it may be 29 it may be 31 you know I, that we'll, we'll run with that but uh, like I said, it's, it is going to be less revenue than last year, and that's what we anticipated in the budget, and we're, we're pretty close. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. Anything else, Ms. Vault? Does anybody have anything for Ms. Vault? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
All right, thank you, ma'am. Sheriff Foster, you have anything? Yeah, it's something brief. I was hoping Dr. Poole was staying in the room, but I'll communicate that to him at a later date. But about a year ago, I came before the board and asked you for permissions to enact Blue Line Solutions and put them in our school zones. They were initially placed in Jackson, Fort Chisholm, and Sheffy, and they've just been recently erected within the past two months of Rural Retreat. And I received a report from them the other day that I want to communicate to you were 97% reduction in the speed in school zones in Lake County. No, we appreciate everything that you do on Absolutely. that and uh, all the information that you share. We and still I, average around 20 to 30 people on the route every day, but we still have about 97% reduction as right. opposed to what we initially started with. And that's the direction we wanted to go. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Sure. Move I, on I, to if new you business. We have a consent calendar on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, I would just uh, throw in, uh, on top of what the sheriff uh, 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 added there, um, our, our contract with Blue Line um, must be pretty good because we're getting a lot of requests from other Virginia localities and some localities outside of Virginia to attach to that contract. So I think the only thing that I would say that I have, have learned out of this is that we need to attach a fee for uh, every other county that wants to attach to our contract every time we do one of these. Well, apparently you didn't run it by Mr. Bear to be a fee of pay. <laughs> That's where you made your mistake. <laughs> it was a rookie error, Mr. Bear. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Hankins. All right, move on to new business. We have a consent calendar. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by <coughs> Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions or discussion on the consent calendar? Right. Here and now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett. Aye. 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 So approved. Next, we have our fiscal year 24 expenditures, expenditure budget, second quarter appropriation. I'll entertain a motion to expend the second quarter appropriations. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Horney. Is there any questions or discussion on that motion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Terry. Aye. Uh -huh. Aye. 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 So approved. Next we have our VACO 2023 annual meeting voting credentials. Mr. Chairman, I understand you are going, so I would request the board appoint our chairman to be our voting delegate. If another board member is going, speak now and we'll make you the alternate. It's just the Vaco one? Yeah. I was planning on going. But I don't need to be an alternate. I can just go. <laughs> Brian better be there. All right. I'll entertain, <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to appoint me as the voting delegate and Mr. Horney as the alternate. So, <laughs> so <laughs> motion by Treat Mr. that to alternate, not altered. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion by Mr. Smith. I have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Terry. Is there any questions or discussion or does anybody else want to do it? Hearing none of the three, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And, Congratulations, and Mr. Horry. I apologize <laughs> there, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would say if anyone else is interested, in it, let Martha know immediately. Uh, Mako is, is pushing her to get all those in, and I guess with it first year being back um, at the homestead in, I don't know, four years or so, uh, I think they're wanting to make certain they've got everything lined up. So thank you. All right, next we have abstract votes, Mr. Counts. Yeah. Um, don't read all them right ins. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there really weren't many entertaining ones this time, unfortunately. Just one so. Bugs Bunny this year. Yeah, just <laughs> one, so sorry. Um, thank y'all for having me. I just wanted to kind, kind of come and give y'all a brief recap um, of the August pop-up election that we had, I'll call it that. Um, the schools were very accommodating. Um, the school being in session, they did the best they could to get us in an accessible location. Uh, we utilized 33 officers for this election, which was the legal bare minimum that we could use. To try and cut. That's really the only area we can cut costs on. So uh, 
we, uh, like I said, we, we utilize as little as possible. Um, ben with the county helped us out uh, in terms of taking everything out on Monday and then me and him went and picked everything else up on Wednesday. Uh, there were only 807 ballots cast in this election and um, unfortunately the cost was about $16,614. And uh, so that made about the cost per vote about $20.58. So if you did vote it, vote, thank you. Um, we, with that number though, uh, like I said, we had 807 ballots cast. Um, we had 100 folks come in in that week period and vote early. And uh, we uh, had received back about 100 by mail, which unfortunately we mailed out over 500 ballots for that election that are on our permanent absentee list. So, of course, that wasn't the best turnaround I would have liked to have seen, especially with which as costly as it is to mail out ballots. Um, I try, and a lot of times we have folks come in that will just walk in with their absentee ballot and they want to vote in person and uh, or vote early in person. And I try to encourage them to cast that absentee ballot because it's about three dollars a voter. To mail, about three dollars per person to mail that ballot out when, it, when you consider postage, the envelopes, and uh, the cost of each ballot. So we um, previously mentioned Mr. Bear. We, we do have three election, two more elections other than November for this fiscal year. Uh, I'm hoping to utilize some of our part-time money to offset the cost for this past election. Um, since we moved early voting down to our office, which is working very, very well for this election, uh, we're hoping to kind of offset the cost with our part-time money for this past election. So, um, speaking towards the November election, uh, we turned around and mailed 500 more ballots out again to folks on our permanent list. So far, we've had about 100 folks come in and vote early. Um, those numbers will increase as we get probably within about the last 10 days. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, if I might, at the Fire and Rescue Committee meeting, there was a discussion about the Electoral Board considering moving Speedwell Voting Precinct sometime in the future from Speedwell Fire Department to the school. I've shared that with Lennon. They will, they will look into that and see if that is something that could happen, if there's a good location at the school, uh, that it could be held there. So. Yeah, well, uh, I, I've notified one of my board members about it, and... Uh, uh, if we'll, we'll get in contact with Speedwell and see if we can make the change uh, for the November election next year. So we'll have a March primary and a June primary. It's You have to mail out new voter notices when you change a precinct, and I'm not sure what the legal requirements are before an election to mail those notices out. So probably the best time to do it would probably be over the summer of next year. So. Okay. Thanks for working on that. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Counts? Yes, sir. All right. Thank All right. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we need to take action? To uh, you just take action to accept the, the, abstract. The, the abstract, yes. All right. Entertain a motion to accept the abstract of votes. So moved. We have a motion by Ms. Lawson. We have a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> so approved. Next, we have staff reports. Mr. Hankins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I have three action items for you to, to consider. Uh, one is your capital improvement plan. Uh, you adopted it at your last meeting. Uh, we made some minor uh, technical changes to one uh, line item, uh, the uh, Fort Chisel Crosswalk Project. We broke down year by year based on the projected cost and the grant that, uh, that uh, Mr. Kinster put in uh, to VDOT. Uh, for the uh, alternative transportation funding uh, program. So um, just wanted you to be aware that that change has been made. I don't know if we need any, any action. It's just a technical uh, breakdown of, uh, of those costs. So uh, that's for your information. Um, two grants for you to consider uh, accepting. Um, uh, congratulations to Ms. Delp and uh, Mr. Williams and uh, some of our emergency services folks who uh, have, have put together uh, the, these grants that were awarded. Uh, the first one is an ESO grant. Um, that's uh, a grant to uh, facilitate better care outcomes for our, our folks who are transported by ambulance uh, by uh, any of our agencies. Um, 
you, you can imagine being a provider and not knowing what the outcome is for a patient that you take to the hospital. Uh, this ESO grant would give, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a conversation and I'm <laughs> getting a little distracted. Um, the uh, ESO grant would uh, work with the hospital and work with our agencies to uh, give them outcomes for that patient care. It wouldn't necessarily identify particular um, you know, patient identity information, but it, it would give them some idea of what happened with that patient so that they can plan for and improve their care delivery the next time they see a similar case. Um, it, it's an innovative sort of program. It, it's all software as a service. Uh, the, the county had applied uh, for $11,000 uh, toward that, and uh, the uh, Whipland Foundation uh, awarded $9,000. Uh, we can make up the $2,000 difference out of our um, operational uh, budget uh, in emergency services, and staff would recommend that you accept uh, that award and authorize staff to uh, make any necessary edits to the, the document and complete the paperwork to accept the grant. All right, I'll entertain a motion to authorize <coughs> county administrator or assistant county administrator to accept the ESO grant. So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Lawson, a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 So approved. Thank you. The uh, second award is uh, for the Asia Park Playground Phase 2. Uh, the county applied for $275,000. Uh, we were awarded $138,000 from the Withland Foundation, uh, just over half of the projected cost. Um, the foundation did make some other recommendations for funding sources, and the recreation staff and uh, grant staff uh, have put together a uh, donation letter uh, to send out to some of our uh, civic organizations and corporate uh, uh, folks to uh, try to make up the difference. Uh, but at worst, uh, if the county wishes to receive uh, this grant and, and put it uh, in place, um, we would be responsible for the remaining $137,000. And there, there is a typo in your memo. I apologize for that. Uh, so I would... Uh, I would recommend that you accept the award, authorize uh, staff to make uh, the uh, normal edits that we make to this document. Uh, that This is an equipment purchase, it's not a real estate purchase, so uh, there are a couple of things that we would just cross out on the, uh, the equipment uh, uh, award and uh, uh, return that to the foundation. Uh, so ask for your uh, acceptance of the award and uh, authorization to uh, fill out the uh, paperwork. All right, I have a motion by Mr. Cook. Do I have a second? Second have a second by Mr. Smith. Is there any questions or discussion on that one? And I will just add that I did talk to Mr. Barrett and Mr. Hankins about the, the, the wording about the property reverting back to the um, with Bland Foundation and, and that was part of what Mr. Hankins um, was talking about making and it's to it so does anybody else have anything all right we'll do a roll call vote mr terry uh 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 so approved thank you and uh one final thing um you know, we've been working to uh, implement the new radio system. We have one last tower piece to put together. Uh, we, we've been fortunate to find a good partner to work, to work with to uh, get that uh, tower installed on Henley Mountain. Um, we, uh, before we move into construction, though, we need to finalize the lease and make the payment for the lease. Uh, the property owners are prepared to come to uh, the county building tomorrow, sign the paperwork, and receive their payment. So uh, request authorization to issue payment in the amount of $50,000. Uh, to the property owner for the lease of that tower site. It is a 20-year lease, and uh, Mr. Farling has uh, review has uh, completed a uh, a lease document for us, and we're, we're prepared to sign it and uh, to record uh, a memorandum of that lease with uh, with the property at the circuit circuit court clerk's office. All right, entertain a motion to authorize <coughs> payment of fifty thousand dollars to the property owner on the completion of the lease. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Corny, a second. Second. Second by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions or discussion about that motion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 
So approved. Anything the, else, Mr. Hankins? The rest of my items are uh, informational, so if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. Otherwise, uh, that's the end of my report. Right. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Hankins? Is there ice at exit 77? Um, they started chilling the slab today, and uh, they're preparing to uh, flood the, the floor uh, either tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to stop by, uh, you're welcome to do so. Uh, that, that invitation is for members of, of the board. Uh, it is still a construction site. It's not open to the public yet except for uh, under invitation to uh, events uh, by the hockey team or by the county. So um, you, you can feel free to go by there. There's a lot of steps involved in this, so it's, it's going to take a while. Uh, I, I'm a little impatient to see ice on the floor myself, but they're expecting that it will be uh, frozen by the end of the week. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, all, right. all, all the dashboards and glass are up. So yeah. it, it looks like a hockey rink now. It just needs the ice. Yeah, it's starting to look good. Yeah, I've seen mm -hmm. that. So yeah, is. thank you for the update, Mr. Thank you. All right, does anybody else have anything for Mr. Hankins? Yes, sir. All right, we'll move on to Mr. Baird. First item I have is the Progress Park pump station uh, serving lot 24 is complete. Uh, however, we cannot start until uh, we start getting some wastewater to it. But I do request that the board go ahead and approve substantial completion of this project. All right, entertain a motion to uh, approve substantial completion of the Progress Park pump station. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Burnett. Is there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I'll abstain. I'll abstain. All right. So approved. Uh, number two, I previously I, I shared an email with you all on the Dunford Road, Route 94 Lime Replacement um, Project. Um, we had hoped that we may be able to get a 50-50 grant on that project like we did on the um, Barrett Mill project. Uh, we were only able to get an 80% loan, 20% grant, but that does mean about $2.7 million of grant money towards that project. Um, we have to go ahead and execute uh, the agreement on this immediately because after October 1st, new median income levels will go into effect with rural development and would not be grant eligible at that point in time. So um, staff request your guidance if you want to proceed with this project, which would be replacing the line generally from 52 all the way down through Ivanhoe on 94, leaving out places that already been changed, and the new construction at Dunford Road, Olive Branch, Bentwood, all those areas up in there. So. If you wish to proceed, I would just recommend that the staff, uh, that the board authorize staff to proceed with the 80-20 um, loan grant for the Dumford Road Route 94 project. I'll make that motion. All right, I have a motion by Mr. Burnett to proceed with the 80-20 grant loan project. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions or discussion? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett? Aye. 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 So approved. Uh, and the next item, unfortunately I didn't run this by the chairman's first to get his approval, but uh, would recommend that you all appoint Jim Lloyd to the uh, with County Virginia America 250 Commission. How many, how often do they meet? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, he's never open. I can't get a haircut now. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to overburden his busy schedule. All right, entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Lloyd to the West County's America 250 Commission. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Horney. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed besides me and Gus? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the rest of my items are informational. Ms. Gwen did rec uh, reference the Auditor of Public Accounts letter that was in here. Um, and, and the other thing, uh, the Fort Chisel Wastewater Treatment Plant expansion, I just put that information in there. We are looking at uh, just putting a pause on that project and unless you all see any objections that otherwise we'll go ahead and proceed with, with that project. Uh, with with pausing on that project at this time. We'll finish up the engineering and go from there. 
But other than that, unless there are any other questions, um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Does anybody have anything for Mr. Bear? Yes, all right. Sir. County Attorney, Mr. Farthing, do you have anything? I do not, Mr. Chairman. All right. Move on to board reports. We've got a Buildings and Grounds Committee. Yes, Chairman. Uh, Building and Grounds Committee met on September 25th, 2023 at 4 o'clock. The uh, and recommends the following. Item 1, approve revenue sharing resolutions 2023-30, dash 30, uh, dash 31, and dash 32 for the Bird Farms Road, Meadowview Lane, and Grandview Drive, respectively. All right, come from committee. It doesn't need a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that recommend or those recommendations? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Uh -huh. Aye. 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 So approved. Uh, second item is approving a change order number seven for the county office building project in the amount of six thousand six hundred and eighty two dollars seventy cent for PCOs eighteen, nineteen, and twenty as shown below. All right. Again, coming from committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any questions or discussion on that recommendation? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Burnett. Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, 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 uh. So approved. Now the third item is approving proposed change orders number 21, 22, and 23 as shown below. Uh, All right, coming from committee, it doesn't need a second. Any questions or discussion on those change orders? I didn't think we was going to tempt the bathroom windows. I thought we was going to put in a window so they could continue to work. All right, Peter, we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. Let's wrap this up. It's getting out of hand. <laughs> Fourth item is the Apex Center parking lot improvements phase one. And uh, Mr. Barrett, would you let us know what? I, I'll defer to Mr. Hankins. Mr. Hankins yes. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Burnett. Um, the uh, our uh, our friends at Thompson Litton, Mr. Burnett's here uh, this evening. Um, uh, they're they designed and uh, they're they're administering the, the bid on this project they uh, held the bid opening last week uh, most of you know i was out of the office for for several days with uh, uh, family illness uh, but um, they, they received the bids um, uh, for the lighting and paving uh, project at the apex um, the uh, we only received two bids the high bid was uh, just over a million fifty dollars the um, low bid was eight hundred sixty seven thousand seven hundred six dollars uh, the engineer's estimate for this project was uh, just under seven hundred three thousand dollar project so about almost 24 percent over what the in engineer's estimate was uh, for the values on this project now, it does have a very tight time frame uh, but uh, we see some value in holding off um, trying to do what we can under the existing contract uh, particularly on uh, lighting, grading, and uh, some concrete aprons outside the building and coming back and doing uh, another bid for uh, paving later on. So the staff recommendation is that you um, reject uh, the bids and authorize us to work under the existing contract to try to make a few of those improvements. All right. Entertain a motion to reject the bids. So um, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Burnett, do I have a second? I'll second. Oh, sorry. Second by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions or discussion on that one? Right. Here now we'll do a roll call vote with Mr. Burnett. Aye. 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 So rejected. And that was all the building grounds to me had. All right. Well, since you got the microphone, we'll go to Board of Supervisors time. We'll start with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I've gotten a few calls about the Byron Springs Trash Center. And uh, if we could ever look at getting another open top at that location, uh, it'd be nice. Um, also, I know you updated us, uh, Mr. Barrett, on 
the pavement at Ivanhoe and Lead Mines and at yesterday, but would you be able to update the whole board on that? Yeah, um, Mr. Kenser has been working with them. There was a request that came back for, for providing some additional gravel that we would pay for, and, and our response back to them was, you know, that you should have installed it correctly the first time they got bad pavement. Uh, they have until October 20th, I believe is the date that uh, Mr. Um, Kenser has given them to come in and completely repair this. They have not been paid for any of their work. He, the two, the two con trash and recycling centers are good. These two other sites are not, and they have agreed to come in and, and repair and do the overlay and put new pavement down at those sites. So it's October 20th is the date that that is to be completed by. Thank you. Yes, That's sir. all I had, Jeremy. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Mr. I have nothing at this time. Mr. Smith. <laughs> I got a couple things. Boy, you, boy, are you ever going to say that? Maybe 10 things. Okay, good. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about the park lines. Jesse's already talked about that. Uh, Whispering Pines interest. Did you, you know, I'm still that? working with them on that. I sent a follow up email this afternoon just to, 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 to discuss that and make certain what they're doing. Okay, and then I, I just want to thank BDOT on their morning. I know they got a, a big chore throughout the county, but they are making some progress on that, so I, I do appreciate that. I did get uh, calls on Miller's Creek Road about a mile in uh, where the water damaged it about a year ago. But doesn't look like BDOT has came in and done any repairs. I think some of the landowners up there are making some repairs with their tractors uh, just to keep the road passable. So if we could get BDOT to check on that, Mr. Byron. And is that that's a mile in from where it breaks off Pepper's Ferry, right. not from in the pavement or whatever? Right. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and then uh, I was in the Connors Valley area yesterday um, following up on a re or, uh, issue with some of the roads or concerned about the roads. They have went through and uh, fixed some of the potholes on the first part of it, mm -hmm. but that road, that's, it's in pretty bad shape. It's, it probably wouldn't hurt to have it repaved right there, so I know that might be... Okay, so this was on this is on the paved this part is on of the very first okay. part of the paved uh, before you get to the first crossover, the first bridge there. So. Okay, and that's all I have, Mr. Bear. All right, Mr. Horney, I don't have anything at this time. Mr. Terry, this one thing, Mr. Uh, Bear got a call from a citizen and he sent some photos that I will forward to you. The uh, Max Meadows Recycling Center. He's been there three times, about ten minutes to six, and it's been closed all three times. I've already sent information to um, Landon and Virgil Moore about that, um, and I got probably the same report you did. Perfect. Okay, thank you, sir. That's all I got, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Uh, and along, I got the, the same call that Mr. Terry did about them closing um, early, and, and I know Mr. Bowers occasionally done spot checks of all the centers. Um, and, and I know Landon's got a full plate, but if in the afternoons or whenever, if he can just randomly check all of them. Um, that and on your VDOT list, <coughs> Fairview Road out here, after it turns into Queens Knob, and I want to say maybe around the 500 block, it's before you get to. Um, What's the road that cuts off of Queens Knob? Huh? Sherrits? Huh? Rockdale. 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 Before you get to Rockdale, it's not a pothole. It looks like a sinkhole that started. Huh? Okay. I took care of that one, sir. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Smith, I mean. I will take you under the wing. <laughs> Your arms are big enough like me. Well, they must. I seen it this morning. I was like, oh, that, that don't look like a pothole. I've done that for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Does anybody else have anything to come before the board? All right, here, none will be adjourned.